Hello, and welcome to the Bronx Journal. I'm Amy Ceballo. Eric Dominique Paris is a New Rican actor and poet who talks about the unusual experience of being a redhead Puerto Rican in New York City. In his one-man show, he now tells the world that he is a real Puerto Rican and that looks do not always determine where a person is from. Here to tell us more about his show and his life is Eric Dominique Paris. Welcome to the show. Well, hello, Amy. How are you? Hi. Um, what's the one-man show about? Well, the one-man show is about um, my story, basically, a biopic story of my whole life of being a redheaded Latino and trying to find acceptance in my own community, um, especially in the Latino community. Um, how did you start? How did I start the show? Yes. Um, well, <laughs> it's a funny story. A couple of years ago, uh, the Puerto Rican Day Parade, it was um, after the parade, I was walking around with my cousin, who's very light-skinned as I am, too. And we're walking around with the bandanas, the flags, waving the Puerto Rico, wepa, and all that kind of stuff. And we go into a park in Hell's Kitchen called Ramon Aponte Park. Mm -hmm. As we walk in there, there were some boys and some girls, they start laughing at us, saying, hey, look at these white boys trying to be down, trying to be one of us, and so forth and so forth. And um, I looked at my cousin, and I was like, they don't know we're really Puerto Ricans. I mean, do we have to shout it out even more? And I answered them back in Spanish, and I said, you know, yo soy Puerto Ricano, del pueblo de Patillas. ¿Y ustedes dónde son? They didn't know what to say, because they didn't speak Spanish. So then I was like, so who is the Puerto Rican now? So from there, I had that little seed was planted on writing this show. And after, um, two years later after that, I met um, John Leguizamo mm -hmm. at the Ola Awards. And I was giving him, you know, a plaque of Lifetime Achievement Award. And I said to him, I have this idea of writing a show um, about being a red-headed Latino, and you have so much experience on this already. What can you tell me? And he said, man, just let your, man your imagination go free. Let it out there. Just get a pen and start writing. And here I am today. Okay. Did you collect, like, different anecdotes to, to get you to where you are right now? Like, all the stories that you have and stuff like that? Well, the stories um, are basically, again, a story of my life from when my parents met in New York, um, being that my mother is a Corsican, French Corsican, okay. and she happened to be living in New York City during the 60s, and my father is Puerto Rican. And um, how they meet in New York. Um, so the show basically talks a little bit about history of where the gringos come from, um, how my parents met, how it happened to be that I was the only red-headed Latino in my barrio, and um, just all the trials and tribulations that I go through, just trying to prove myself over and over and over that I am Latino. Um, as a red-headed Puerto Rican, of course, mm -hmm. um, have you been bullied as a kid in high school? Oh, yeah, yeah, I've <laughs> many times. Um, I grew up in Parchester and in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. So being in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn was mostly Italians. And um, there I dealt with a lot of bullying because I wasn't Italian. I was Puerto Rican. And um, at that time, the 70s, it wasn't really accepted to be, you know, that it was something else. Right. You see the movies Bronx Tale and all that kind of stays yes. the same story. Um, so yeah, I had a, got, got to a lot of fist fights for that. Um, then when I moved to Puerto Rico, since I was speaking English, now I was a gringuito down there. Oh. And the native boys didn't like that too much because I was getting attention from girls. So now it's another way I had to prove myself and more bullying from that too. Um, so yeah, I've been proving myself a lot. <laughs> so like, but again, it's, it's all been fun. It's all been fun. And it's just stories that you look back in life and you see, well, I overcame this, I overcame that, you know, and um, you use it for a show. Is um, whatever you went, everything you went through in Puerto Rico also part of the show? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I talk about how when I went to Puerto Rico, I didn't speak a word of Spanish and how hard that was to learn to speak Spanish, um, being bullied by the kids that were talking about you and you didn't know what they were saying. Um, so that was already a lot of bullying right there as it was. Um, but again, like I said, um, I don't want to make it like a petty story about me because it's not, it's all fun. Um, so it's kind of like you grab all the crazy stuff that happens in your life and you turn it around and you laugh at them. Mm -hmm. And I guess the public seems to laugh at it with you too, so they enjoy it too, you know? The, there's a show called La Gringa that a, a, a Puerto Rican actress also does. Is that mm -hmm. also, like, has to do with what you do? Um, I haven't seen it personally. Um, I think it's something different. It's more like a dramatic piece. Um, I know they present it at Repertorio Español. Yes. And um, it's, it's different because, again, mine is more like somewhat stand-up comedy 
Um, I play 12 different characters. Um, and my show is presented in English, French, and Spanish. And um, some characters speak French, some others speak Spanish. But I do um, like a bilingual kind of thing, that I repeat the phrases in English after they have said their words in whatever language it was. So that way the audience could keep ahead you know, with the play and not get lost um, because of the language translation and all that kind of stuff. Who are the people that you um, talk about in the play? Who are the people I talk about? Um, well, I'm pretty much a narrator, so I'm telling the story of my life. But I talk about how my parents met in the 60s, mm -hmm. um, how they met on a subway station, and they were trying to rob each other. And that's how they met. Um, I mentioned that. <laughs> I talk about my grandparents. Um, I talk about my grandfather, who used to pick me and my cousins up all the time after school. But me and my little cousin were a little too rowdy, so he didn't want to take us to like regular New York City parks. So he used to take us to the cemetery to play. And he just <laughs> let us out there for <laughs> and roll free. And because he just kept saying, you guys are too rowdy, so I don't want to have you guys you know, in regular parks. OK. Um, I talk about my grandfathers. Um, I mean, both my Corsican grandfather and my Puerto Rican okay. grandfather. Um, I talk about professors that I had in school. Um, like I had this elder Cuban teacher in Puerto Rico who was she was like four feet tall, but she was like ferocious, like a giant, you know? She just had everybody panicking all the time. So I talk about that, I talk about the coqui. Um, I got some slam poetry in the show. I break dance in the show. I'm doing some floor work, um, salsa. Um, a couple of different elements in the show. And the characters in the show, the, all these people are part of the, the characters in the show too? Yeah, definitely. All these characters are part of the show. Yes, exactly. Um, they come in and, you know, they. They come in as I'm telling the story, and then I'll probably present somebody in there, become the character, and then I come back to myself again. Um, so yeah, I'm doing different elements um, throughout the play. How do you connect with the audience? Well, with the audience, that's what gives me the energy. The audience is what I feed off from, because it's pretty much breaking the fourth wall. I'm pretty much breaking the fourth wall only when I'm in the characters, um, in the set itself, but through in the narration, I'm with the, you know, with the audience, is pretty much how, how the energy I'm feeling from the people there, um, the scent. For some reason, the scent gives me some energy. I guess the ladies with nice, um, good perfume on, I scent that, and that gives me energy to play. There's men there too, you know, with their husk, you know, masculine, masculinity. Um, the scent also gives me that role to play. Um, and it's just the vibe of people enjoying themselves. Um, and it's not all straight up just straight comedy. Um, there's a lot of funny moments, but it's also a story. So it's kind of like I take you on a journey, as I call it, a journey to the galaxy with me and my own story of a Rejere Latino. And pretty much I just tell the people, just when you come to the show, put on your seatbelt, because we're going for a nice little ride. What were your idols growing up? Growing up, oh wow, um, I have to say a lot of New York and um, poets, and Puerto Rican poets, like um, Billy Tomas, Julia de Burgos, um, John Leguizamo has been a big influence in my life. Um, so has Esaya Morales, who's a very good, um, very good actor. I saw him the first time in La Bamba. Mm -hmm. And that's when I saw him in a movie, I said to myself, I want to be doing the same thing he's doing. You know, um, it was just fascinating. And um, just being, again, being Puerto Rican myself, again, I'm half Corsican and Puerto Rican, but I embrace more to the Puerto Rican side, okay. um, just said to me, this is what I want to do. Oh, and the number one of them all, Freddie Prince. Right. Freddie Prince was my idol. I mean, you know, he died, I was still a young kid, but I remember watching like segments of Chico and the Man and just saying, wow, this guy just blew me away. And my parents were really blown away by him. So I had a lot of influence by um, Freddie Prince. When are you going to have another show? Well, my next show is coming up um, at Broadway Comedy Club on June 8th and June 9th at 7 p.m. Okay. Um, you can check out the website. Um, they're already been putting up, posting it up. And um, I just had the run was uh, for a week at Teatro Latea, which, by the way, El Gringuito was the winner of the 2011 Juan Festival of solo shows. And because of that part feel? of that to do that, how does it feel? Well, it felt great, it felt really good. Um, it felt really good to do that, um, but a Gringuito then, when it won, it was a 30 minute piece. Now it's a 60 minute piece. So oh. when I presented it, it was like pretty much a brand new show. You know, it took me um, a while to feel the rhythm again of the whole show because it changed a lot. Um, but the audience was very pleased with it. And you know, that's, again, 
is it's not about me. It's about a gift that I try to give out to the people to feel feel how they feel. That's at the end of the day what makes me feel good. Um, it's what they say, un don. Yes. Um, can you give us your contact information? How can people reach you and stuff like that? And then give us a little bit of the uh, poetry that you have. For yeah, us. sure. Um, well, you can check out um, El Gringuito on Facebook, and um, I'll be posting a lot of different things there. Um, you can see it there on Facebook, uh, most of the stuff. And yeah, that's pretty much how I'm going to be posting it there. So I'm also the co founder of a company called Dead Hibaros Productions. And um, from our website that we're it's still under construction, we're going to be putting more information about that too, and um, the Hibar Productions website. Can you um, do a little bit of poetry for us right now? Yeah, sure. I am the red-headed Boricua, outside among gringos and amongst Boricuas, Italianos, Boricuas, men, women would all say, you're not Puerto Rican, but what is Puerto Rican? Puerto Rican is the smell of coconuts, the sea, cow droppings. The waves of the ocean, horses galloping paso fino, pollitos running around, guayaberas and pavas. Sound of motorcycles, rotary cars, cowbells, the cuatro, the clave, and the coqui. Boricua is also salsa, freestyle, bomba, plena, little lie, b boy girl with hoop earrings, guys with white tank tops, the projects and tenements. Flags of the parade, speaking Spanish, English, Ibanez, and Spanglish. A feeling of pride that comes from within, radiating outwards for all to see. I stand tall before you, a flamboyant tree. My Puerto Rican identity evident in my strong trunk, deep roots, vibrant red leaves, unapologetic in my ability to stand apart, to stand on my own, to stand here before you. Whether I dress like a roquero, a cocolo, house head, hip hop head, soldier, businessman, college student, I could just take off my clothes and be butt naked and look you in the eyes and tell you that this is Puerto Rican. At the end of the day, when it's all said and done, it doesn't matter where I am or where I'm from. I will always be authentic. The two-sided coin, redhead Puerto Rican with ingredients from both sides of the Atlantic with a whole lot of love to go around. Ay bendito, el gringuito. <laughs> that was beautiful. Um, thank you for coming on the show, and that was very 